Oracle eBusiness Suite can be deployed on on-premise, that's left-hand side, or on public cloud, like Oracle Public Cloud, that's on right-hand side, or can be deployed on private cloud or also called as clouded customer in the middle. And these are some of the deployment model where EBS database tier can be deployed on a particular setup and middle tier can be deployed on a different setup. I'm going to cover all this in a minute, but before we start, let me introduce myself and also tell you why EBS customers are moving to cloud. My name is Atul Kumar. I'm an Oracle Ace since year 2006 and I have around 18 years of experience working on Oracle. I'm author and also present at various Oracle events. I'm also founder of company k Academy and this tech tip or this video is sponsored by k Academy. Now, before we go deep into what is private cloud, public cloud, what is infrastructure as a service or platform as a service, or what is OCI or OCI Classic, let's first look at why customers are moving to cloud. Now, the number one reason for moving to cloud is the cost. The cost to run any application, including eBusiness Suite, is very low when you do it on cloud. However, if customer is already spent a lot of time and money on to running this eBusiness Suite, why would they move to cloud? or why would they spend extra money on moving that whole setup onto cloud? So the reason one is that their existing hardware is coming to an end of life. For example, eBusiness Suite, let's assume, is currently running on Linux 5 or 6 or Windows or Solaris, and that hardware or that operating system needs to be upgraded, as well as the underlying op hardware needs to be upgraded. So in order for that upgrade, it takes a lot of time and effort. So instead of upgrading it on premise, it's customers in customers benefit. It's always go to the cloud. That's reason number one. Or customer is running in a managed service model where they've outsourced their e-business suite environment in a managed service environment. And that managed service contract is coming for renewal and they would prefer or in that scenario it's more beneficial to do it on the cloud so that's reason number two reason number three is could be you have a short development requirement or you already have an e-business suite and you want to extend slightly a functionality and in order to develop that functionality you might need some additional environments now and which is why quite common so instead of provisioning or instead of catering new hardware for these extra environments, you quickly develop those onto the cloud. So you clone your environment from on-premise to cloud, develop or these additional servers or do the development work on the cloud and bring these new functionality or, or development setup and do that performance testing and production testing on the on-premise. So the development becomes quick and you only pay for uh, roughly around two to three months or whatever time it takes to develop that functionality and then you can return those servers back. Another reason could be you can build a hybrid cloud and in cloud you only pay for environments that are up. So if your DR is only doing a log shipping and you don't have the log apply or the application tier will be down because you don't need DR application tier to be up. So you're not paying for compute for the DR server on application tier. So that's a reason for, for moving to the cloud. Or let's assume you want to have an engineered system like Exadata and the capital expense or the amount it takes to buy that Exadata is quite expensive. So you would rather subscribe to that Exadata machine and that you can do on the cloud. So if you have a workload requirement that needs servers like Exadata, you'll be better running on Exadata cloud service because you're only paying the OPEX or operational cost or expense. So these are some of the reasons. Reason number one, your hardware is coming to an end, managed services is coming to an end, you have a short development cycle, or you want to do a DR on the cloud or Exadata. These are some of the reasons which for which customers are moving to cloud. So now let's look at how the EBS can be deployed on cloud. Is it the platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, or combination, and which tier goes where? And in order for me to explain that, let's first look at 
e-business suite architecture very quickly. So e-business suite has three tier architecture where you have a database tier, which on which your e-business suite database run. Then you have an application tier where application logic or things like your concurrent manager, form server, web server, if it's application server like weblogic for 12.2 or application server for a release R12.1 or 12.0 or 11i set. And then you have a application or the client tier, which is on the client side. So you have your database tier and application tier. So now these database tier and application tier can be deployed either in infrastructure as a service or paid form as a service. So let's first look at what is paid form as a service and infrastructure as a service on a very high level. So there are three service models in cloud. One is called as infrastructure as a service. Second is called as platform as a service and third is called as software as a service. In infrastructure as a service, the cloud vendor is going to manage networking, storage, servers, virtualization. And after that operating system, middleware, data application, it's the client's responsibility. In platform as a service, everything that's in infrastructure as a service on top of that middleware or the platform like databases, weblogic server, or any other platform on which application run, that's also managed by cloud vendor. So things like database cloud service, weblogic cloud service, or developer cloud service, these are example of platform as a service. Whereas example of infrastructure service, your CPU, memory, storage. So for the database tier of eBusiness Suite, you have an option to either go for infrastructure as a service or platform as a service that is DBCS offering, database cloud service offering from platform as a service. I repeat one more time, the database tier can be either deployed on infrastructure as a service or can be deployed on platform as a service and the offering is database cloud service. And application tier of eBusiness Suite will always be deployed on infrastructure as a service. Now to further complicate it, the infrastructure as a service has Oracle has two offerings, OCI and OCI Classic. And I've covered all this, what is OCI, what is OCIC, what are the difference between OCI and OCIC on our blog, that's on k21academy.com forward slash IAAS, that's Infrastructure as a Service 12 and 13. So if you want to know a little bit, go deep into what is OCI, what is OCIC, then have a look at the blog, which is ketoninacademy.com forward slash IAAS 13, IAAS 12. So the infrastructure as a service, you have two offerings from Oracle, that's OCI and OCI Classic. And now, once you understand all this, let's look at how the eBusiness Suite R12 can be deployed or what are the deployment options for eBusiness Suite on cloud or Oracle Cloud. So first, you have a database tier. So database tier, as I said, can be deployed on infrastructure as service. And within infrastructure as service, you, you can either deploy it on OCI, which stands for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI-C, that stands for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Classic. Or you can deploy a database tier on platform as a service and within platform as a service offering called DBCS, Database Cloud Service. Now, within Database Cloud Service, you have database as a service, which is a normal database on a cloud where you have full access to the virtual machine. You also have another offering from in DBCS, that's Exadata Cloud Service. Or you can have Rack, that's real application cluster within the either DBAS or Exadata Cloud Service. So these are the offerings here that you have for eBusiness Suite database tier. Then if you look at eBusiness Suite middle tier, as I said, eBusiness Suite can be deployed only on infrastructure as a service as of May 2018. It can't be deployed on platform as a service. And within infrastructure as a service, you have an offering, it can be deployed either on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure OCI or OCI Classic or OCI C. Also, you have a dedicated compute, which is on Spark Model 300. So these are the deployment model you have. So just to do a quick recap, Oracle eBusiness Suite is typically, it used to be deployed on-premise. It can still be deployed on on-premise. However, customers are moving for the reasons which I told you earlier, and they are either going onto the public cloud or Oracle public cloud to be more specific, 
because of the utility EBS Cloud Admin Tool. What is EBS Cloud Admin Tool? Go and check out on ktoninacademy.com forward slash EBS Cloud 12 and 11. So if you want to know more about Oracle eBusiness Suite Cloud Admin Tool, go and have a look at ktoninacademy.com forward slash EBS Cloud 11. And if you want to know the roles and responsibilities to be performed by a cloud apps GBA, then have a look at k20academy.com forward slash EBS cloud 12. So you can either de deploy it on public cloud or you can also deploy on clouded customer or private cloud. You can have either on infrastructure service or platform as a service. Within infrastructure as a service, there is the OCI and OCI classic. Platform as a service, you have database cloud service and within database cloud service, you have Exadata cloud service or database as a service. So the database of eBusiness Suite can be deployed either on infrastructure service that's either on OCI or OCI Classic or on database cloud service that's PaaS offering and in that DBAS or Exadata cloud service or Rack with Exadata or you can deploy it with EBS middle tier on OCI and EBS middle tier can be deployed either on infrastructure service and within infrastructure service OCI or OCI classic or you can have a dedicated compute on Spark model 300. So well that's all about deploying Oracle eBusiness Suite R12 on cloud. Now if you want to go further deep and learn more about how you can learn eBusiness Suite R12 on cloud quickly also what things you should learn and go in deep about these things. I would love you to join my free 90 minute session on you can register for that session on ktoninacademy.com forward slash EBS cloud 02. I repeat it's ktoninacademy.com forward slash EBS cloud 02. Wherever you're watching this, if you're watching that at YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you want to have weekly update with tips how to's quick update what's latest on oracle and cloud in general then don't forget to our subscribe to our blog by going into k20academy.com forward slash blog and on right hand side you will see subscription button to register enter your name and email address and you will be joining 23,000 plus subscribers who are already benefiting from our weekly update that's pretty much from me atul and i'll see you next week